Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to Plague Inc. Evolved, and a very special video because this last week, the developers added a new official scenario into the game. The Shadow Plague. Sentient mutagenic pathogen triggers a powerful thirst for blood. It is a vampire plague, basically. And uh, it's actually pretty darn unique. You'll see a bit more of as as we go, but I have a strategy that I think should work. Now, I've played this about five times, lost the first couple of times I played, because I tried playing it like a normal disease type and lost horribly. Uh, and since then, I have developed what I think is a foolproof strategy that has worked well for a normal, and I see no reason for it not to work very effectively in Mega Brutal as well. So we're going to try it out today, see if it works. Now, as far as genetic codes, because I've only played this a couple of times, I have not unlocked all of the genes. There are quite a few to go. However, I do have Healthy Eater, which increases vampire maximum health. Not really relevant for me, but it's okay. Scavenger, which gets extra DNA from destroying labs and Templar bases. Now, this is actually pretty cool. And Bat Bolt, which allows for increased vampire flight range. Honestly, though, using the strategy that I have right now, you do not need any traits at all. Scavenger will be a little bit more helpful for me, but otherwise, not a big deal. You'll be fine with no traits if you've never beaten this before. You can go from day one into Mega Brutal, use the strategy, and you'll be fine. Now, we are going to be switching things up to Mega Brutal. And the default name is Nox Eternus, which I think means Eternal Darkness or something. I can't remember my Latin, but either way. Something is waking. Centuries ago, a human close to death was infected by a sentient pathogen, the Shadow Plague. Buried deep underground, the human was slowly consumed and transformed. The Shadow Plague has fully mutated the DNA of its host into a being of great power. Now, driven by eternal hunger, it is time to rejoin the world. This time, humanity will fall. Yay. Okay, so it's difficult to tell you exactly why I'm going to start where I am without first going into my strategy. But for now, understand I'm going to be starting in Greenland of all places. I have a reason for it. But ultimately, with the strategy that I'm employing, you can start in any country you want, and you'll end up being just fine. This is just to be a little bit more optimization, uh, a little bit more optimal than what I was doing before. But anyway, if we go ahead and move forward, we see that a vampire rises in Greenland. The world has changed beyond belief, but the vampire can already smell the blood of billions of humans, waiting to be consumed and subjugated. We're going to be going for a subjugation playthrough primarily. Now, by starting the game, we have 19 DNA points on Mega Brutal. You get more if you start on easier difficulties. And this right here indicates the vampire, a special single character. Because think about this, right? In most of the vampire stories, you have a character like, let's say, Dracula, all right? Um, and Dracula, he can go around infecting a bunch of vampires, but at the end of the day, Dracula is the master vampire. He is the one super vampire, right? Well, that's basically what we have. And this is our little character represented by a kind of a little blood fountain coffin thing with bats. I don't know. But either way, this is where our character is currently located. And we will be able to move him around and use special abilities in order to consume the world. Now, the reason I started in Greenland is basically as I travel around the world, if I start here, I will never have to backtrack. But again, you could start anywhere. It will be fine. What I'm going to do in Greenland is consume the entire population. And I'll show you how that works. First off, as far as transmissions, there are no options in the beginning of the game. And for symptoms, there is only Shadow Blessing. We are not going to pick up Shadow Blessing. And once you pick this up though, this unlocks the rest of the symptoms and transmission tree. But we don't need this. None of this is important. In fact, this would wreck our strategy. Do not take it. For abilities, you can see that it's actually been changed to vampires, and we have a special set of abilities. We have Blood Rage, which allows us to attack a country and its military facilities or research facilities. Otherwise, just consuming people for DNA, because we're killing people in great numbers, and the lethality translates into free DNA. Pretty useful, and this is going to be critical for our strategy. We do start off with Blood First, which basically means that whenever we're in a country, we're just going to naturally start having, killing people a little bit. Tiny bit of lethality guaranteed wherever you go. We have Night Wraith, which makes us more stealthy, uh, less likely to get detected. Honestly, not important. We're never going to pick it up. We have Therianthropy, which gives us the ability to temporarily tr mutate into a vast winged bat-like creature and travel around, kind of like a Trojan Plague scenario. This is the active uh, ability that will allow us to move from country to country. And then we have Lair. Vampire able to create a lair to rest in and heal also generates DNA, kind of like you would expect from the simian flu camps. 
but I would say that the layers are not a very reliable way of creating DNA, and I will not be relying upon this at all. Instead, we are going to focus on Blood Rage. Now, the reason I like Blood Rage here is because this is going to allow us to consume a population and get a ton of DNA in the early game without doing any infectivity, and that is absolutely crucial. So let me explain a little bit about how the Shadow Plague works. There are two main threats you have to consider. One, uh, and naturally just the cure. As you continue to infect people, they'll eventually set up research stations, just like you would have in the simian flu, and try to cure you. You don't want that to happen. That's an easy way to lose. It actually goes really, really fast if you cannot deal with it and travel around attacking the countries wherever there are research labs. The other major threat, though, are the Templar. Now, this is kind of like the Necroa virus. As you kill people, as your lethality goes up, the nations of the world will band together to form military facilities to try and attack the population of a country that has some vampires in it. You do not want to deal with both of these simultaneously if you don't have to. In Mega Brutal, that's extremely difficult to travel around, dealing with the uh, military facilities and also keeping the cure at bay. But here's the trick. You can manipulate this in the game. If you do not infect anyone, then the uh, research facilities will never start. No one will ever start the cure. You can kill people, you can get DNA, you can travel around the world and set yourself up, but if you never infect anybody, then you never have to deal with the research. All you have to do is deal with the Templar. Once the Templar are dead, then you can infect the world and you'll be just fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start killing the people of Greenland. I'm going to devour the entire population. I will not infect a single person in the process because I did not pick up Shadow Blessing. But I will get some free DNA, like you can see right now, just by murdering them. And I'm going to clear house in Greenland. They will be entirely dead. Then I will move over to Iceland and I will kill the entire population there. Vampire feeding attracts attention in Greenland. The vampire feeds by drinking the blood of its victims, leaving behind drained corpses. It is only a matter of time before the humans realize that they are dealing with something far worse than a murderous cult. Yeah, well, anyway. Now again, because I'm going to drain this entire area, what I'm, basically all I'm doing is just saving myself the trouble of backtracking to Iceland and Greenland later. But ultimately, it does not matter where you start, you'll be fine. Now for um, our abilities, let's go ahead and pick up Dark Infiltration, which will allow us to uh, do more damage a little bit faster with our Blood Rage. I will also pick up Therianthropy before I forget, because I want the ability to travel. If I devour the entire population of a country and get stuck there, then my Vampire will starve to death and I will lose. So I need to save just enough DNA to travel to and from other countries um, before I eat the entire population. Blood Cult Leader Tracked in Greenland. Authorities in Greenland have confirmed that they have tracked a highly dangerous individual who they believe is responsible for the horrifying Blood Cult murders that have shocked the world. Now, this basically means the humans know where I am and the Templars are going to fire fairly soon. Normally, this would mean you want to leave the country. But with my strategy, we don't care. We are going to tough it out and stay exactly where we are. Now, we have killed everyone in Greenland, which means my vampire is starting to starve. Don't worry, we have a whole new host of blood meat bags that I can suck dry. So let's click X, and we will travel in this little radius to Iceland next. There we go. See? Pretty easy. And then we will continue our blood rage by using our ability and start devouring the population of Iceland. Gather up some more DNA. Now we need to get Shadow Blades next. That will cost us 28 DNA points. No problem. Iceland will be more than enough to provide all of that for me. And the last level of blood rage is Demonic Fury. Vampire channels the Shadow Plague to call down unspeakable devastation on its foes, becomes more powerful. We're just trying to kill people as fast as possible at this point, generate DNA faster, and get a better score. Templar Industries reveals global vampire threat. The secretive multinational defense company reveals that a vampire is behind the blood cult murders that have shocked the world. Templar Industries claim to be taking urgent action to defend humanity. Very soon they will militarize. Very, very soon, in fact. There they are. Okay. Templar Industries activate military protocols across the world. Now, they will be getting more powerful as time goes on, but otherwise, I'm not especially worried about them. I'm going to stay exactly where I am in Iceland. I'm going to devour the population. I'm going to become more powerful. I want Demonic Fury, and I need to start working down Dark Ritual. And this is an ability I haven't talked about yet, but basically what happens is when you are attacking a nation that does not have a military post, you're going to start healing. And that's going to be very useful because when I travel my, take my vampire to go and fight them, I'll lose some health. I can sit there and then can heal after I've killed the base before traveling on to the next one. 
Ultimately, I don't think we even need it, necessarily. If we do our job well, we will not need Dark Ritual at all. But I'll take it anyway, just to be safe. For now, I want to max out my Blood Rage with Demonic Fury. And then we will travel around and kill some more people. So this is actually a pretty... A pretty okay spread for military stuff. I've had a couple of games where uh, all of them start spawned like really close to each other around the Mediterranean. This time we have three in Europe and one in South America and one in the United States. I've also had a game where one was in Europe and then there were two down here and two down here. It takes forever to travel around. You can still beat it, but it's really annoying when that happens. But otherwise, meh. This is okay. It's just about getting as good of a score as possible. People in Iceland are trying to form groups to hunt me down whenever it feeds. Honestly, will not matter. Maybe I lose a tiny bit of health. I don't care. I really do not care at all. How are we looking as far as the population? We still have quite a bit of population to go, so I feel like we will be able to upgrade our Blood Rage as soon as we have the DNA for it. But we'll save a couple of extra points just so I'm able to travel and attack, and that will do just fine. All right. Demonic Fury it is. Yeah, it sounds like they're trying to shoot bullets at me. You can't use bullets on a vampire. It doesn't work. It's not very effective. All right, Dark Ritual only costs 10 points. We'll pick up one level of this. The second level just basically means you can heal even faster. And I probably will get it just to be safe, but ultimately, you may not require it at all. Okay, the population of Iceland is dead. Let us travel off of Iceland, and we can't quite reach anything else, so we will travel to the United Kingdom. And then we shall travel to, I don't know, let's say Finland. Can we get to Finland? We totally can. Fly up here now. It leaves behind a trail of where you've flown before. I don't know why, but it does. Now, let's attack Finland and destroy the base. Perfect. Templar base in Finland destroyed by the vampire. In a cloud of darkness, the vampire brutally attacked the Templar base. Some survivals were able to escape to other Templar bases with crucial knowledge that will help the vampire fight in the future. And basically what this means is every time you destroy a Templar base, the rest of them will get more powerful. They were already going to get more powerful over time, but this just encourages you to deal with them quickly rather than let them get ridiculously strong. But at the same time, I think we're going to be fine because we have five levels of Blood Rage. We are extremely effective in combat. Now, I don't need to attack Finland. Instead, I'm going to fly to, I think it's in the Baltic States, yes? Yes, it's in the Baltic States. So let's go there next, and we will immediately destroy this base. Now you can see we're losing some health here, so I do need to be careful about that. Let's go to Germany next. We'll attack them, we will destroy their base. There we go. Now I am getting kinda low on health, but we need to travel to these other bases next. Let's go to Morocco. See these planes flying out here, that's making these bases more powerful every time a plane lands. Let's travel to the very tip top of West Africa so I'm able to get over to Brazil. Like so. Fortunately, all these abilities only cost one DNA, so it's never too expensive to get around. Now we will feast in Brazil for a little while, and you can see that my health is slowly going up. I am going to pick up Dark Ritual level 2, that will mean that we heal extremely fast now. Perfect. And let's fly to Colombia, which is where the next base is located. Okay, now we need to attack them. And you can see that they've managed to do a lot of damage to me thus far. If I need to back off, I can, but I think we can win this fight. Vampire in Colombia is close to death, but we're about to destroy the base. Let's now feast in Colombia and heal right back up. Oh, we got an achievement. Luck of the Devil. That was the closest my vampires ever come to death. All right, now let's fly up to the United States, and we will attack them. Now, I may have to go back and forth in the United States and heal off of Mexico periodically. So let's attack them. We need to pay close attention. I'm actually going to be playing on just a little bit faster speed for now, so I'm able to react quickly. I do not want to lose this vampire. It would be very bad. All right, let's pause. Let's go off to Mexico. We will spend a little time healing up here. And getting some more DNA in the process, which is good. Now let's go back to the United States before they can heal. And attack. We're just going to keep doing this until we destroy the last base. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. Very effective. Templar forces eradicated. In a devastating assault, the final Templar fortress has fallen to the vampire. Who will defend humanity against the darkness now? No one. No one shall defend. Let's go to Mexico. Okay, I'm going to heal off of this. Now, you may say, why not start in uh, the United States to heal? Why move? Good question. The reason why is because now we are going to focus on building some lair tech. So here's the layers we need right here. This is useful uh, for allowing us to heal, generating DNA, and so on. But we're going to pick this up, and we're going to set down a lair in Mexico. Now, positioning of this, these lairs is actually very, very important, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. 
Um, for now, let's see. Can I afford... I can totally afford travel speed upgrade level 1. We need to just sit here and heal off of Mexico. Keep generating some DNA. I'm going to then fly down toward Brazil. And we're going to place a lair down here in Brazil as well. Now, okay, why is the lair positioning really important? Because of this ability right here, Shadow Portal. When traveling, the vampire is able to instantly travel to any lair in the world regardless of distance. Which means if I have strategically located some lairs apart from each other, let's say one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here, that means that wherever the research facilities spawn, I will very rapidly be able to teleport across the world and kill it. It's just good for rapid response. And on top of that, though, you can't see it here, but these are our heat, cold, and drug resistances. And interestingly enough, your resistance levels are based on where you positioned your layers. So if I have a layer in a hot country like Brazil and Mexico, I will get two levels of heat resistance when I pick that up. But if I do not have any layers in relatively cold places, then I will get no cold resistance for my disease. So the layer positioning becomes very, very important. Now let's feed off of Brazil for a little while because I do need some more DNA. We will set down a new layer right around here, actually. So I'm able to teleport to this and immediately go to Africa if I need to. And let's speed ourselves back up. So all I'm going to do now is travel around and set up some new layers. I want to set one up in Germany, good central location in Europe. I want to set one up down in, let's say, East Africa or maybe Sudan. Um, I, you could technically position them in places where there's very high populations. There's an argument to be made for that. But I'm not going to be relying upon uh, these layers for any amount of um, DNA. So we're not going to worry about that, really. I'm not worried about being in a high population. Now let's go to Africa next. Uh, we could upgrade our flight again, which I guess we'll go ahead and do. Good. Let's feed off of West Africa for a little bit. I think I will set one up in Central Africa. Really good central location. You want to have one on each continent just for rapid response, I think. So let's go ahead and move over to Central Africa next. And feed for a little bit. Now we'll set down a layer. Good central location. Right there. Then we'll go up to Europe next. Now this does require a lot of patience because I'm not, I have not started a single infection yet. I have not infected anyone. I still have not picked up any symptoms. I'm just gaming the system so I've had to deal with the Templars first and then I'm setting up a good ground game to deal with the infection because once they start trying to cure me, it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with it. It can go fast if you are not prepared. Uh, let's go ahead and feast in Germany for a little bit. I actually can go ahead and set up a base. It does not matter to me if I am feasting in the same country I have a lair. That's probably completely fine. You can see that these are generating one DNA point each. Kind of irrelevant. Not that good, but meh, whatever. Let's go ahead and travel. Whoops. Right click. There you go. Travel from here to, let's say, China. I usually like to set up another colony right here, close to some islands. Good central location in Asia. And let's devour the Chinese for a little bit. A little bit of a uh, Mandarin... Blood something, you know? Yeah, that's great. Like, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, hmm. Anything else I really need to talk about right now? Because this is pretty much the entirety of this strategy, at least until I get enough DNA to deal with... Um, the infection. I think we're okay for a little bit. So, I hope this strategy so far is making sense. Again, you can see here, by destroying Greenland and Iceland first, I don't have to go back there later. But ultimately, doesn't matter where you start... Just devour the population, get your blood rage up to maximum, do not infect a single person, do not take Shadow Blessing, kill the Templar, right, and then go set up your lairs, and then basically all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit around and eat. And at this point I'm actually going to speed up the video because we do not have much to do, at least for a little while. I'm going to travel over to Australia because I think it's a good central location for when I do start my infection, but for now all I want to do is sit back, devour the population, and gather up some DNA points. In fact, I want to stash up somewhere on the order of 350 DNA points minimum. Arguably, you could go for more. You could wait until you have about 600 if you want to, but the longer you take, the worse your score is going to be. I find that 350 is a reasonable compromise, but that's worked really well for me on normal. Maybe I'll actually stash up about 400 points just to be safe, but it takes a while. All I'm going to do is sit here for the next five minutes, so that's why I'm speeding through this section of the video. I suppose it's worth pointing out that uh, you technically could win the game just by doing this, sitting back and just 
eating entire populations of countries. You could do that in every single country, never infect anyone, and you will win by default, but you're gonna get a terrible score. Now that we have 400 points, I am finally going to pick up the Shadow Blessing. This will begin the infectivity part of the game. And we still could lose if I don't manage this correctly, but I think we will be fine. All right, Shadow Blessing is done. Now you can see here we have Vampiric Awakening. This would allow us to create a second vampire that we can control. It'll kill a lot of people in the process though, and I don't need it right now, but still, kind of cool. Nocturnal for increased infectivity, Dark P uh, Pustules again for increased infectivity, and slightly harder to cure, pretty useful later. Transmissions have now been unlocked. We will grab one level of air, water, fomites, and droplets. And I will pick up Zoonotic Shift and Bats to increase our infectivity and land transmission, as well as some mutation which cannot hurt us. We've already killed a lot of people. Lethality doesn't matter at this point. So I'm totally okay with getting mutation. Does not matter. That's all the infectivity I need at the moment. For vampires, let's go ahead and pick up Blood Gift. Vampire visits hundreds of humans each night and marks them in blood, infecting them with the Shadow Plague. So simply by being in a country, my vampire will increase the infected a lot. In fact, as we continue to go down this to Dark Cloud, to Shadow Trail, and to Corrupted Air, millions of humans will be infected every day. So basically our vampire is now the single most effective way of spreading the plague ever. Now we will pick up some level of drug resistance, we will pick up a level of heat resistance, based on the number of layers I built, I have built in the uh, proper countries. Germany is considered cold, so I could pick up a level of cold resistance, and I guess I might as well. It's at least something. And that's all the abilities that I will need for the rest of the game. Transmissions, we're looking okay right now. Let's go ahead and grab Nocturnal. And now we have a couple of different paths we could go to. They'll ultimately meet up. It doesn't really matter. I like going for Steroidal Boost to make us appear healthier and more attractive, increasing our infectivity. I like going for Pheromone, pheromone Secretion so we can seduct, uh, seduce people. There we go. More seductive. That's what I'm trying to say. Photophobia makes us uh, intolerant to the light. Again, increasing severity and infectivity. Hyperdontia. The teeth in the infected grow and can protrude from the mouth, increasing infectivity and severity. Jugular bite, again, biting people on the neck, infective, severe. And finally, shadow slaves. Now this is a victory condition for the game. If we can now infect the population of the world with shadow slaves, we will win. Neurop neuropathic manipulation causes severe behavioral abnormalities and eventually permanent psychosis, causing infected to become slaves to the vampire. Okay, done, we've got that now. And now we have a few different options. We could go for Muscular hypo uh, Hypertrophy, which would allow us to become very infective and severe. We could go for Dermal Calcification, which gives us lethality over time. I have no need for lethality, so we're not going to worry about that. But Blood Sacrifice allows us to generate extra DNA in layers as more people are infected. And that can make us just a little bit more effective as we try to spread around. So we have all of that. I'm now going to go for Dark Pustules, and that will just reduce the effectiveness of the cure. And I'm going to continue to do that for a little while just to make sure I have the best possible possible score. All right, simply by existing in Australia, we will almost immediately infect the rest of the population and we will get a DNA bubble. I'm then going to travel away from Australia into New Zealand. We're going to try to infect all the islands as quickly as possible, and that's why I left myself down here to feast, so that I can immediately just travel, gather up all these other islands, and they'll never have to be a problem for me. Okay, that's done. Move to Indonesia. Now, very soon, they're going to start working on some labs, and I can teleport around very rapidly to deal with those. That was the entire point of this design. Because you can see here, with this layer, I can access Canada, the United States, and all of Central America. I don't need to worry about Iceland or Greenland, which would be very difficult to reach otherwise. Brazil can reach pretty much everywhere. Africa can reach everywhere. Europe can reach everywhere. Asia can reach everywhere. I'm already done, basically. I do not ever need to have a second vampire. I probably will, but I don't need it. It's completely optional at this point. All right, let's go ahead and transfer over to China just so I can get the high populations going. Then we'll go to India next. And just by being in here for a single day, we have hundreds of thousands of people infected in these places. It will not take very long. Russia has been infected as well. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some new transmissions. I will grab dog for urban areas. And it also increases the likelihood of mutation, which can be useful to me. Okay, they still have not started working on the cure. That's fine. Let's go from India up to, um, let's say Saudi Arabia. Now, here's the thing. Every single country has already turned off all of their ports. So air and water transmission as far as getting on planes and boats, not that useful. That's why I didn't grab more levels of it. It really does not matter. 
We're going to go from Saudi Arabia over to, let's say, Egypt. Just kind of spreading the plague around to a few central locations. Let's go to France next. Vampires are waging a civil war in New Guinea. Science is banned, and that's one of the advantages of the Dark Slaves. So what basically ends up happening here is once a population has been completely infected, then the country is not allowed to contribute toward the cure anymore. So that's what happened. I just infected all of New Guinea, and now New Guinea cannot contribute to the cure. If you do not pick that up, even if you've infected the entire country, they will continue to work on the cure. This is going to be really critical for stopping them. Uh, still no sign of their research labs, which is great. Let's go up to Scandinavia. Anabolic boost symptom has just mutated for free. Notice how rapidly we are spreading through India and China now. That's it. All I have to do is just stop in these countries for just a, just a moment, just a brief moment, and they're going to die. I'm focusing mostly on cold countries right now because I don't have as much cold resistance. That's my purpose. Now, a new uh, lab has been built in Central Asia right here, which is not far from where I already am, so let's go down there. Let's grab some more points. Uh, I'm going to grab high sensitivity, malignant pigmentation, and uh, latent adaption pretty soon. Again, significantly harder to cure. That's the only reason I care. Let's go there. Let's go ahead and destroy the lab. They have set up a couple more labs in Europe. So let's uh, pause. We will transfer teleport over to Germany. Instantly pop up over there. Go to Poland. Destroy that lab. Okay. Pause for a second, please. Thank you. Now we'll go down to the Balkan states. We'll destroy that. Done. Okay. No labs active right now. Uh, what else has not been infected? Most of Africa and the entirety of North and South America. Did I not get into Japan? I thought I did. Okay, let's deal with that real quick. I'm going to teleport over here. It does not cost very much DNA, so I don't much care. There we go. Japan's done. Now let's teleport over to Brazil. And there actually is a research base nearby, and there's one in Spain as well, which I need to be careful about. We're going to go from here down to Argentina. We're going to destroy that base. We're going to teleport up to Germany. We are going to go to Spain, destroy that base. Okay, we're going to teleport over to Mexico, go to Canada, and destroy that base. See how rapidly we are able to stay on top of the cure. Now, one thing I could do now is pick up Vampiric Awakening. This would get me a second vampire eventually. It'll kill a lot of people, but otherwise, who cares? And then I can control two vampires to fly around and infect people. We're going to go ahead and pick it up because I don't think it matters too much, but we'll do it. Let's also grab muscu uh, muscular hy uh, hypotrophy or hypotrophy, uh, masticatory tension. There we go. And we're just increasing our infectivity and severity as much as we can to max out our infectivity and DNA. I will also grab wolf for better rural regions. And otherwise, what's not infected? We have the Caribbean, Madagascar, and parts of Africa, and so on. Okay, let's go down to the United States. Actually, let's sit here for a second. Just infect Canada a little bit more, get them up to their critical mass. Dermal calcification just mutated for free. USA has been infected. Let's now go down to Mexico. They're infected. Let's go to the Caribbean. Now, it takes a little time to get your second vampire. That's the only reason we don't have it right now. Let's teleport up to Germany. Let's go to the United Kingdom. Let's destroy their research lab before it can do anything. What else are we missing? Madagascar. I thought that I did get to the Caribbean. Apparently, I did not actually stay long enough. Let's teleport again. And let's go there. How much DNA do we get out of these layers now? Eight. So we're getting a lot more DNA now out of these points than we were before. Let's teleport over to Central Africa. Yeah, I really don't think you need a second vampire. It's not going to hurt. It helps just infect the... Um, neighboring countries, but that's it. We have a new vampire created in Poland. It's a Polish vampire. Excellent. Let's have this guy sit around and heal in Poland for a little while. Not that it matters, really. In fact, it doesn't matter at all. Let's just go ahead and transport him over to any country that is not being very rapidly infected. We're just trying to reach critical mass in as many places as we can to save ourselves some time. Gonna infect there. Now let's go to Angola. You go to Italy, since they're holding out on me. Okay, Angola is looking good. You go to Morocco. You go to Finland. Okay. Looking good in Morocco now. Anemia mutated for free. Um, starting to hit critical mass in places like the United States. Let's teleport over to Mexico. You can go to Norway. And we're more or less done at this point. I think every country in the world has been infected, yes? Yes. Look how much DNA I have, by the way, and I don't even care. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and pick up a couple of little things here and there just for the heck of it. Um, 
Uh, hypocoagulability, sure, why not? Internal hemorrhaging, sure, why not? Just a little lethality, it doesn't really matter, though. Because at this point, very soon, we will see that the entire population of the world has been infected. What else is missing at this point? USA and Italy are the only places left. Let's go from Norway to Italy. And this vampire is actually not infecting quite as fast as he used to, but whatever. There we go. Nox Eternus has enslaved the world. We have beaten it on Mega Brutal with 50% cure progress. The Shadow Plague has fully corrupted humanity, and now, after thousands of years, the vampires can finally begin their rule of blood and pain. The world falls into darkness. Only 1.8 billion dead. Done. Vampire Master Achievement unlocked. And we even got four stars out of that, which is pretty good, I would say. Actually, cool. The uh, playthrough actually shows you where the vampire goes. Nice. So yeah, that is an extremely effective strategy, I find, for Mega Brutal, and um, it's foolproof. I don't see how you could possibly lose that. If you don't wait to get enough DNA in between the uh, Templar and the research, maybe that could come back to bite you, but otherwise, you're fine. Now again, you could sit back and gather up even more DNA if you want to. Uh, instead of waiting till 400, which is what I did, and then you're going to be able to explode even faster than before. At some point, I just think that's kind of boring, but yeah, this is arguably the easiest of the Mega Brutals to beat if you follow this strategy, because you cannot lose as long as you are willing to be patient. I don't think we need to watch the entire full playthrough because it's going to take a very long time. I think you get the idea at this point. We did unlock a new trait. Let's just see what that is real quick. Uh, Brawler. It is Blood Rage doesn't cost any DNA. Eh, mildly useful for that strategy. Not too bad. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. Sorry this video was a little long, but I wanted to make sure that I explained my methods entirely so that you will be able to replicate this yourself. I do hope you enjoyed and will hit that like button, leave a comment, and of course subscribe if you want to see my future content. My name has been Provis, and I will see you guys next time.